வணக்கம் குட் ஈவினிங் டு யூ டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் எ வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஏரியா வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஏரியா ஹவு டு ரைட் எஸ்ஸேஸ் ஹவு டு ஸ்டடி டெஃபினிஷன்ஸ் அண்ட் ரிமெம்பர் டெஃபினிஷன்ஸ் ஃபேட் வென் யூ ஆர் ரைட்டிங் எவர் எஸ்ஸேஸ் விச் ஐ ஆம் கோயிங் டு டேக் இன் த நெக்ஸ்ட் டூ செஷன்ஸ் when you are writing an essay you need to have an introduction and whenever they are asking a question there will be lot of deep philosophical ideas they will be they will be expecting from you as a as an ias officer what are they for example we use the words very freely like values ethics justice thinking that all are same in fact they are definitely not all are the same and how do we go about defining things defining words precisely at the same time when you are writing your essays how do you put forth your arguments in fact any essay has only two components one is the introduction then arguments for or against it and how do you decide this is only expected out of your essays therefore the first thing is how do you go about how do you go about arguing about for against or or what is your arguments you put forth your thinking should be on the arguments arguments and how well you introduce the topic probably i will share with you another 50 topics which has already been asked and uh, probably i will write few essays myself so that you can clearly see what exactly is the process of writing essays here what i have done in this class i have taken ethics as a topic and go about discussing how do you define things one very difficult unless you have a very strong very strong reading and writing practice i want you to read stanford philosophy and cyclopedia and i strongly recommend for you to go through the lecture given by michael sandel and i have given a link for you you go to the link go through his entire lecture it is not once you listen you will get everything you need to listen you need to write you need to practice probably one hour lecture you may require four to five hours of writing and an another five hours of getting a full hang of this entire lecture so what i'm this this is what is my experience in my uh, teaching the class okay let us go into this particular discussion yes plutarch is one of the greatest essayists in the world he was born 46 bc that means before christ and for almost 500 years of greek history he has he has brought to you greek and roman kings he has brought to you brought to every one of us and let me go through one of his quotes if 
great men heeded your words in their minds and hands put them to practice virtue would live instead of lust or belona war say his wisdom way back 2050 years he says if your minds and hands practice and right that is what is the quote that has been given there in greek actually says we know saint belona means belona means war and i have just created a small icon where you can remember easily i have put minds as brain and hands as practice and we are going to see what is ethics by looking at this yeah now today i am going to see let us see the objectives this is a series of eight essays eight essays eight essay writing lectures designed for anyone interested in writing essays or for appearing for exams say i want you to have this feel that exams is incidental to your learning journey sometimes you get through sometimes you may not get through but that is not our destination it is only a means you travel through the examination definitely examinations are not or definitely not your destinations therefore what you have to do is just exams come and go but your knowledge search will continue we will start with how to define ethics morals values ethos virtues justice and how to distinguish between them justice and how to distinguish between them therefore people will be going on talking about you know he has no ethics he has morals he has values he has ethos virtues i think we need to be very clear in our definitions there is a there is an extraordinary book written by a russian author on definitions which we are going to see during the course of the lecture i'll be introducing all these characters at the beginning but i we will be discussing it later when we are actually having the lecture if you remember all these things therefore when you are when we are when we are going to study them when we are progressing in our learning you will learn all those things plutarch contribution he has written one of the best books parallel lives and it is a series of biographies of illustrious greek and roman uh, noble man and he paired them that's very important therefore it is not an historical account he was not describing the various events and on a timeline no he was writing on human nature he was providing an insight into the human nature but though he was he has written about uh, 30 pairs but only 23 pairs survived and four unpaired single lives also he has written about them he is the greatest essayist and his thoughts have influenced thinkers philosophers essays nobels nobels mathematicians politicians and logics logicians you can definitely click on the link here 
or if you are not able to do that definitely go through the my in our youtube video you will find blue tracks contribution now you should understand keep this timeline in your mind and you will see if you are looking here at the bottom confucius is almost the oldest after tales but confucius is before socrates he preceded aristotle now you will see here on the top the world's greatest philosophers like descartes voltaire karl marx nishtati jean paul sartre these are all the i mean philosophers and thinkers who have influenced our mind in fact nishtati has influenced pandit jawaharlal nehru to a large extent i think karl marx has influenced the thinking of 19th 20th century and descartes we are going to discuss almost all these philosophers i am going to discuss with you probably i may include few like immanuel kant which i consider strongly one of the greatest philosophers who have who have influenced the thinking and uh, immanuel kant is already there probably bantam i will include here and uh, we can definitely see angles and these are all some of the major some of the major i have not given a complete list of them because it will clutter jean paul sartre sartre we write but jean paul sartre and bernard russell bernard russell is a mathematician now all these philosophers thinkers mathematicians have influenced our thinking in fact pythagoras is considered as a philosopher while we all know that he is a mathematician pythagorean philosophy was one of the most important areas which you will like we will discuss all these things may not be exhaustively but definitely we will discuss them so that when you are writing your essays when you are expressing your thoughts you will be able to do better now you will definitely ask me what should we read all these starting from 600 bc till 2021 including the story the the his the sapiens written by one of the most fam famous israeli author historian should we read them the answer is yes you should read them if you want to really understand the political economy if you want to really understand the economic decision making may not be as exhaustive as as i am trying to give you but you should have a good feel of entire philosophical thoughts of the people now let me go to the first word justice we read a lot of justice we say that social justice what is justice actually how do we define the word justice justice in its broadest sense is the principle that people receive what they deserve with the interpretation of what constitutes deserving being impacted upon by numerous fields with many different viewpoints 
and perspectives including the concepts of moral correctness based on ethics rationality law religion equity and fairness this state will sometime endeavor to increase justice by operating courts and enforcing its ruling or now let us carefully go through this entire paragraph now when there is covid 19 every human being in the world who is likely to be affected by covid deserves a vaccination now if you think he he or she deserves a vaccination that means it is based on moral correctness and equity and fairness a, a person living in a deep jungles of jungles of africa has the same right as you or a person living in america to be vaccinated justice demands that he should be vaccinated on the other hand if you look at the vaccination process that has been undertaken in the country in the world united states have purchased three times of its population vaccines the pinch is approximately 75 crore vaccine vaccinations have been purchased so up three times for example if they require twice that means approximately 150 crore its population is approximately 25 crores they have purchased four times by this way of purchase and this way of distribution you are denying vaccination for everybody in the world and vaccines are patent protected so everybody can't manufacture vaccine because there is a patent for it therefore pfizer it has a patent for its vaccine the different vaccines have patents therefore if you have a patent for those vaccines the cost of the product will be very high now you are denying a large sent large group of countries in the world to immunize themselves now what is the justice here we talk about justice we talk about various other things the poorest country in the world is burundi if you happen to go to burundi you will find that even in the airport the place where everybody will be coming the microsoft if you see the announcements it is being made with the microsoft and it is a pirated pirated uh, software and it is one of the poorest countries in the world while there is a large number of people let us take a country like us we waste approximately 50% of our food during the transportation during harvesting during transportation and after coming over here to the shops you find that almost 50% of our food is being lost on the other hand the countries like united states produce products like johnson's baby powder which was found to be carcinogenic in fact there is a flood of cases against johnson and johnson now johnson and johnson officially has recalled all its products now let us think of justice 
what exactly happened to probably billion children in india and another 3 to 4 billion children across the world who were thinking that johnson's baby powder is the safest for the baby now is the company was made to pay for its unjust behavior towards its customers now these are all the thought processes you should have while thinking about justice therefore i was a person was born in af africa therefore is he deserve not to have a vaccine because the government are very poor they, they they can't afford such an expensive vaccine where exactly the moral correctness comes into what is rationality what is law what is religion what is equity what is fairness these are all the issues you will be debating in justice it is not just quotes there is reason why sometimes we have used the word there were when you are writing your essays you have to be very careful in coining and designing your sentences because you are likely to write 1500 words and what you have to clearly think is how do you sculpture the entire the sculpture the entire words they so that they will have the maximum impact on the people who are going to read your essay we will probably see uh ethos pathos logos later but now for time being we will definitely go to justice definition therefore there are many theories of justice it started with the ancient greek philosopher plato in his work the republic we are definitely going to summarize in our lecture on the on the republic and aristotle has given nicomachean ethics and they advocate you know the divine dim, divine command theory that means justice is something coming from god therefore we have to accept plato and aristotle did believe in god and up to up to 1600s it was prevailing across the globe as not in asia we will have a different discussion on hinduism and buddhism but here we will definitely discuss the western greek roman philosophical thought john locke said justice is derived from natural law this is something very important what is natural law we will see what is natural law and social contract theory has been put forth this is a very important kind of a kind of a kind of a social contract which i will give you an example now so that you will understand better what happens is amma direct yes now let you 
let me exa let me have an example now every human being wants absolute freedom therefore i'm i'm a person with absolute freedom therefore what i do is i'm working in my field and definitely i'm getting more potatoes rice and everything therefore i can eat for the next year also this year potatoes everything next year so that i work hard one year and then i save something for my for my dark days now i'm happy therefore i am having all the freedom now what happens is a very important thing a set of 50 people they were all idling their time they suddenly found that there is no food for them so they come to this farmer's house and ask for food and because they are powerful 50 people against one man they may take the produce telling that we need the food now what happens is this farmer who was having absolute freedom to do anything in his life he gives away certain amount of freedom to the government to enforce that he is not robbed therefore government's role come here as a process of social contract this is what exactly you mean by social contract an individual gives away certain freedoms he says that i will pay something as tax but you ensure that i have a legal right to whatever i produce now one very important thing is do you have right for the land for example i go take there is one place where is uh, can a country go to any place in the world they see that nothing is that therefore they take it into cultivation can they claim it as their own country the answer is yes united states do that if you take guam guano it is actually what has happened is in 18th century they went on found that the bats excrement of the bats are found to have a great uh, great impact on the on the fertility of land so they went to any of the countries they took the took over to go the countries even though people are there they claimed that it is their country even today this law prevails in united states now you will find there is a conflict because just because they come and see you and nobody is there to claim or even if they are there you can just bull, uh, i mean push them away you can claim that particular land as your own land of course that is a different issue on justice but here the issue is social contract therefore i lose certain amount of my my freedom so that i will be protected i may be i i i am also asking government to grant me grant me private property in many of the communist countries you don't have a private property because they consider that marx have considered that it is a legal robbery now let us go back to that let us go back to the presentation now in 1800s utilitarian philosophers such as john stuart mill said that justice is based on best outcomes for the greatest number of people something some something that 
from my first lecture you will be getting some bells ringing in your ears of bantam coming out with his utilitarian concept now utilitarians are also known as consequentialists what exactly is the utilitarian and consequentialism now what happens is is drinking alcohol bad the answer is yes then why it is available in government shops is playing lottery is it bad yes but still why governments are still having their own lottery schemes is it not gambling yes now when you have these things the philosophy given by js mill and bantam is what is the consequences of it probably people may take alcohol but the government taxes and the taxes are being used for largest number of people therefore it is the consequences that matter and it is not the means so just imagine yourself in your mind the consequences therefore 15% of the population which is drink, who, are, who are all drinking alcohol they spoil their life spoil their health but 85% are benefited therefore let us go ahead with the utilitarian principle therefore the entire world how started believing this utilitarian principle uti or consequentialists i will have a discussion tomorrow on more on consequentialism by discussing stanford encyclopedia but i want you to understand one important thing if that be the case what will happen for example you take uh, a poor person in india this has been well documented in villivakkam in tamil nadu chennai there is a large number of people who sell their kidneys it is a subaltern society there now if you are large number of if the people are donating their kidneys according to the utilitarian principle you are a person who is having large money but your kidneys don't function therefore what you do you go and give it for some consideration consideration means money you get money required because kidney one kid with kid one kidney you can survive but one important medical aspect is you you don't uh, if you are a, if you are your body constitution is not very healthy you are likely to die 5 years to 10 years yearly if you donate your kidney now if you are a just a consequentialist you will say yes you can go ahead with this murder of people now we have to think the consequentialist approach or approach of markets therefore let markets decide everything let government just turn its face away is is it the right thing for this case there is a categorologist or deontologist emmanuel can come out with his theory that there is certain amount of rights which are inalienable you cannot just allow the markets to go with it tomorrow in the class we are going to distinguish between these two approaches which is a burning issue in the entire world now because there is a large amount of inequality inequalities are just increasing probably 0.001% of the people therefore a, a set of people in a bus in united states 
they control the 70% of the GDP of United States. Same case with every, the number of billionaires are going up, the number of people who are getting less than a dollar per day is increasing exponentially across the world. Even our own country, we, we just got, but it is not sufficient. Therefore, how do we do this utilitarian philosophers have influenced the economic and legal thought, have not thought about the negative implications of their thought process. Therefore, we have to see, starting from Plato, Nicomassian ethics, and John Locke's social contract theory, you will definitely examine these things so that you will be able to write a better essays and understand the world better. See, what happens is in a class like this on philosophy, it may not give you an answer. The answers appear to be obvious. But when you dig deep into it, it will unsettle you. You'll be feeling total unsettling. But what happens is skepticism, being skeptical, it's not a permanent place. As Michael Sandel, Professor Michael Sandel has told, you may temporarily be skeptical, but it is not a permanent dwelling place for you. You have to come with an S or no answer for things. Now, one of the theories of justice is distributive justice. Therefore, for example, I am a rich man a very rich man, or I use all the resources and I get billions of dollars. Probably I may quote Elon Musk. But at the same time, if he says that I don't pay taxes, for your information, Jeff Bezos that have, pays no tax. His $170 billion worth richest man in the world. He says that I got all my money because I got merit. Fine. But can we leave large amount of population with uh, no food, no home? Therefore, at this place, we have egalitarians. Egalitarians are the people who say that all men are created equal. All men are created equal, men and, or women. Therefore, everybody deserves a share. Therefore, this is an egalitarian approach, which considers equality as a main thing for our existence. John Rao used the social contract theory to say that justice and especially distributive justice is a form of fairness. We will allow X, Y, Z to make money, but definitely we will tax them, we will distribute. We tax their income as well as their wealth. Now, Robert Nozick said that property rights also within the realms of distributive justice Suppose, for example, if I have a large land, I till all the day. If some people who are lazy, they come and claim all my produce, I think there is no distributive justice. Probably there is some strength in that argument. But we need to definitely look into it, you know, so that people do not, you know, just because I have, in a village, I have the largest amount of land. With that surplus money, I try to buy all the smaller lands and I make all the owners subservient for me. It is not distributive justice. Therefore, you have to draw a line. Now, the next one is retributive justice. In retributive justice, what you do is all wrong 
things have to be punished. For example, if somebody is violating the law, he has to definitely be punished. That is retributive justice. But one very important thing is restorative justice. So in, a con in our country, we don't have victimology. Or we don't restore. For example, somebody goes and kills a person and his entire family becomes destitute. Now what happens is the person who has murdered the person have to be brought to justice and he has been given sentence. But what happens to the family whose, whose uh, entire livelihood have been taken away? There is no restorative justice. Except for in few cases, the judges give some kind of a relief, but you don't have the victimology where restorative justice is being being administered in societies. Now you can see here the word justice how brought a plethora, a large amount of words and words like egalitarianism, social contract, retributive justice, retros, restorative justice, distributive justice. You can see here each one of them probably is a book by itself. So you have to clearly think that how these things will come into your decision making as, as an officer or as a human being. Now, the egalitarian transition. Here is a small diagram which I borrowed it from. Freely, I am borrowing all my diagrams from the net. For nothing, nothing, the positive things are going to the authors. Probably if I make a mistake, it is mine. Okay, Prabhakar, you can definitely give it, give it in your give it in your comments. Now what happens is when we are apes, the social structure is aggressive, bitter, grooming, and there is a hierarchical social structure. Very aggressive. A tiger comes. And he doesn't bother about a, a deer. It just kills because it, it is hungry. But over a period of time, we evolve egalitarian social structure. And the language that we have developed, it influences the human being. In fact, here is what the moral benefits, moral beliefs, to uh, last justice, these are all the things coming to the egalitarian social structure. Therefore, a human being is one person who thinks all these things. For example, the animal never bothers about human rights. On the other hand, a human being has to really bother about human rights. Therefore, climate, geography, large game, you know, Brain size, the brain size, what we were having in 1800 is definitely not the same as we are having now. The brain size have increased, the processing capability have increased. The IQ of the persons today is far more higher than the IQ of 1800. Therefore, as you develop language, as you develop various other things, your moral beliefs, laws and justice, you become egalitarian. That's what this diagram says. But we need to de dig deep into these areas and probably have a better understanding of these aspects. Now, what is this social contract theory? This we come very frequently in your thing. I'm just giving you a brief introduction. People give up individual freedom to do whatever they want in exchange for peace and protection. This is what exactly social contract theory is. Now, if there is no social contract theory, because I am born in India, therefore, whether I accept it or not, 
I have a social contract with the government. Contract is an agreement enforceable by law. Therefore, for example, if I am born in India, I am supposed to follow the laws and rules and regulations of India. I cannot say I am ignorant of it. Ignorance is no defense. You cannot say that, you know, I just killed a person and say that I don't know that I have killed a person. No. Ignorance is not, is not a defense. A war of all against all hobbles. No development, culture, industry, arts. Therefore, always living in debt, continuous fear. Uh, therefore, you know what happens is, the social, if there is no social contract and you don't accept it, you will find anarchy everywhere. You can't have anything and nobody can preserve their life. Now, let me come to ethics. Now, why we do we need ethics? Ethics means what it gives an answer. What should I or we do? How do I make decisions? How much should I eat? If I eat very heavily, I am depriving somebody else. If I eat very less, I am depriving myself. Therefore, what happens is, what shapes our decisions? For example, if you want to travel from Chennai to Delhi, you can go by train, you can go by flight, you can go by various other modes, including walking. May not be a good alternative, but it is possible alternative. On the other hand, you are worried about the carbon footprint. So what you do is you take carbon footprint by traveling by air, traveling by train, traveling by car. If you look at the carbon footprints, you can always find out the distance traveled and the carbon footprint. And if you want to minimize, probably you will choose the transportation which minimizes your carbon footprint. Therefore, ethics helps you to evaluate the alternatives and choose a decision. Therefore, what happens is, oh, therefore, ethics and decision making means I should know what values I have, what principles I have, what beliefs I have, and what are all the norms? But what are all the definition of value? What is principles? What is beliefs? Therefore, what ethics asks us is what are the conditions for a good choice with a good consequence? Two things. You should take a good choice and you should also know about the good consequences for everyone. Every time you make a choice, you change the world, your world. For example, listening to ethics class in the afternoon, or I may say that, sorry, I'm feeling boredom, I'm going to a movie. Okay, both are alternatives. But which alternative will take you to a better life in a later period of time is the decision. Therefore, your choices decide your world. Now let us go to the definition of ethics. This I have taken from the from the uh, dictionary and the rules of conduct recognized in respect to a particular class of human actions or particular group, culture. For example, if you are a doctor, you have a medical ethics. If you are a Christian, you have a Christian ethics. Therefore, there is a work ethic known as Protestant work ethic. But when you are using this word, ethics, 
it means it is the branch of philosophy that deals with the values relating to human conduct with respect to rightness and the wrongness of certain actions and to the goodness and badness of the motives ends of such action and ends of such action now if you to see the definition there are lot of other words coming out of this definition one is values human conduct what is human conduct and what is rightness and wrongness and what is goodness and badness of the consequences and what is motives now you got a large number of other words now in defining things you have to be very careful in knowing the meaning of each word within the definition now i have just split the words in the definition for you to help you to understand the meaning of each one of these words now values which i am going to discuss more during the lecture the next word is human conduct human conduct means it is a human behavior plus activity action and motion all the four things combined together becomes human conduct human behavior got a definition by itself rightness and wrongness of definition motives we have a definition for itself motives that is what drives a person to do or not to do certain things is known as motives therefore what motives that drive a person that is motive and ends of such actions you can see the definition encompasses five components of it values human conduct rightness and wrongness motives and end of such actions that is outcomes therefore whenever you are defining anything the people if you are writing this kind of a definition people will be understanding with this kind of an understanding of values now if you go to the website of tatas which are many organizations have values but one of the most valuable company in the world tata is having a six core values integrity excellence unity understanding responsibility and agility in fact it emphasizes integrity the person who is joining tata will never accept bribe or give bribes therefore his integrity is 100% and he will strive for excellence and he will not let down his colleagues unity and he will have understanding of what is his responsibility and agile that means quickly changes himself so that he works for the company now these are all the core values of tata but values are basically individual benefits that motivate to people to act in one way or the other for values are not company values they are if you see the tata values is they said the core values are promoted among its employees its customers with government with various stakeholders therefore values cannot be you know values of x y z it cannot be values of an entire country no they serve as a guide for human behavior it provides the guide generally people are predisposed to adopt the values that they are raised to for example if you are in india you may be having a certain indian values of being frugal frugal means you don't be showing off yourself try to be a very frugal and organizations do have their core values expressed emphasized to be practice at the individual level integrity is at the individual level company is having integrity but you as a person do you accept those integrity therefore in order to simplify for you i will define like this 
value is a particular mode of behavior and importance of that particular mode of behavior to a person or a group of persons is known as value therefore what what happens is it is a particular mode of behavior integrity excellence these are all particular modes of behavior and the importance they give for example if you give a bribe the next minute you are out of the company similarly the ethics committee of tata is so the chief of ethics committee is not reporting to the tatas because if he reports to tata if you got something a grievance against tata probably you may not you may not be able to say that no i have a grievance against tatas therefore the ethics chief is above the top management of the company so this is what the core values you are practicing in an organization now value types here there are 10 value types given by schulz therefore you have power achievement hedonism stimulation self direction universalism benevolence tradition conformity and security schulz is a one of the greatest uh, i mean he has studied lot of values these are all the value types that he has probably i will discuss more of these things in the future class now since we have discussed values we go to human contact human contact consists of four things behavior behavior gives rise to activity activity gives rise to action action gives rise to outcome therefore in attitude which we are going to study in depth on carl jung's carl jung has given one of the finest personality definitions uh he had he was contemporary to freud but he differed with freud and came out with this one of the finest theory of personality which we will discuss in attitude attitude is belief feeling behavior therefore there is a belief in you which drives you to a positive feeling or a negative feeling and which gives rise to behavior therefore before behavior you have attitude therefore the belief for example i have a belief that if i come out of my house and a cat crosses me then i believe that that's not a good omen and immediately what happens is i will have a negative feeling and this negative feeling may be transmitted by telling myself that I, i may not be succeeding in this then i go back home or i just ignore it and go now what happens is the belief feeling behavior belief and feeling components are from attitude and behavior is what we see outside i go into my kitchen that's a behavior the activity is prepare chapati therefore the action is i take i i mean activity is of uh, preparing dal and then making oil and heating all these things are activity that they, they themselves do not work on anything now action is preparing a chapati now outcome is what i get therefore examples of good human conduct is not to lie keeping the promise honesty loyalty fairness concern for others commitment compassion all these things are human conduct therefore you are not studying behavior alone you are doing activity and action and outcome combined together becomes human conduct that is what part of your definition of ethics now what I, what will i do is i will just break for 5 minutes so that i will come for the next class therefore here you just revise 
take the PowerPoint presentation, what I have shared with you. The first 15 slides I want you to go through and then come out with your own thinking of what exactly we are trying to discuss and where exactly we are going to lead the discussion. Thank you very much for your for being with, with me and I will come to the next class in a five minutes time. Thank you.